You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore daddy. So I want to start off today. I had um, asked for a bunch of questions and also went just kind of perusing around online to kind of just see if anything could kind of jog the old thought process or whatever. Um, not going to get anywhere near through all of these questions, but I will be saving them and, um, you know, pulling them out as necessary. And um, I'm not going to go through the whole article here, but um, went over to Packernet.com because it's just an aggregation of a bunch of Packers news and articles and everything. And right at the top, there's an article from Cheesehead TV that says, this needs to be the year the pack commits to the run. And immediately it got me looking into some stuff. And unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find all the information I want. I'm going to keep digging into it. But I've got enough to at least bring it up. Um, because I, it's one of those things I just can't get off of. If you ask the stat nerds, they will tell you, doesn't matter. Doesn't Just erase it from your playbook. Don't run the ball. It's stupid. And if you do, the only reason you run the ball is to set up the pass. Doesn't matter how successful you are, etc., the, the issue I have with that, and I understand that this is a stupid thing because I tell people this all the time when, when it's, oh, yeah, you watch the tape. Okay, the problem is I watch the Packers, and I just don't get that. I know for a fact if I watch a Packers game and they can't run the ball, we're going to probably lose this game. If they have no success running the ball, we're going to lose the game. Conversely, if we're running all over that team, we're going to win the game. And I can back that up statistically. Now, Again, the stats people will tell you, well, no, that all you're doing is setting up the pass. Da, 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 da. Here's the thing. I don't care. You know, it, it's kind of like saying my body needs salt or whatever. I'm, I'm low on salt. Well, you don't really need salt. See, what happens is when you eat the salt, it converts into this and it does this to your blood. So what you really need is, is hemoglobin, schlobin, flebin, flobin. And the salt just kind of helps your body grow. Dude, I don't care. I don't care about the process that takes place after I eat the salt. What I know is that I am deficient in this thing, and if I eat salt, I'm no longer deficient, so I need to eat salt. I can tell you with 100% certainty, if we run the ball and we run the ball well, we win the game. If we don't run the ball well, we lose the game. What happens beyond that doesn't really matter. So let me just give you some information real quick. And to be clear, the uh, stats community will also tell you it's more about attempts than it is about success. And I think that that tends to be true. In other words, what's more important, attempts or yards per attempt? It definitely seems to be attempts. But either way, it still doesn't really matter. It doesn't. Because guess what? You're not going to run the ball 35 times if you're getting 2.4 yards per carry. You're not going to do it. You're going to get away from it. And you're going to throw the ball. And when you don't run the ball, you don't win the game. But let's just start with yards because it's a combination of attempts and yards per attempt. The Packers are 17-0 and in their top rushing um, games. And that's, this is out of 54 games over the last three years. You have to go all the way down to game 18 where they ran 122 yards and lost to the Detroit Lions before you find a game where they didn't win rushing the ball for a lot of yards. In fact, over 100 yards, the Packers have only lost four times, and that's out of 32 games. 28-4 and four ain't exactly a bad record. Conversely, when we rush for under 100 yards, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 losses. That's out of 22 games. So some automatic questions are going to come up or, or objections. Number one, all these wins are just because of garbage time. When you're winning by a lot, you run the ball because you just want to run out the clock. And so that's how you stack up a bunch of yards. First of all, no. Um, 
if you just look at, for example, the top one here against Detroit, we won the ball, the, the game 42 to 21. So very clearly, we probably ran the ball a lot and did accumulate some yards. A uh, couple objections here, though. If we weren't running the ball successfully, say Detroit was holding us to two yards per carry or whatever, do you think we would have just been running the ball? And if we did decide, who cares if we can't run, let's just run the ball and punt because they're down by uh, three scores. How do we get to 259 yards, running two yards a clip? The answer is you don't. In fact, I can give you the answer. We ran for 7.4 yards per attempt in that game. There's also some other issues here. Not all of these games were blowouts, which is what the implication would be. Carolina, 24-16. Uh, Washington, 20-15. Detroit, 23-22. Carolina, 24-16. Honestly, even games like Minnesota, 43-34, to these high-scoring games, technically that's more than one score win, but at what point do we say, eh, who cares, let's just run the ball? Apparently, the Minnesota Vikings, they scored 34 points. They can score, and they can score fast. This is a shootout. There is no chance on planet Earth that at any point in this game, in this very high-scoring game, that they said, eh, let's just turn to the run. Maybe the last drive with a couple seconds left, but even that, if you think you're going to go three and out running the ball, are you going to do it? I wouldn't. But again, I can answer that question, 4.94 yards per attempt. In fact, of all the games that we won in this 17-0 and uh, stretch, the only one that was under four yards per attempt was the very bottom one um, against the Pittsburgh Steelers, 3.97 yards per attempt. Now, the um, stat people will also tell you, I may have already said this, I don't know, I had to re-record things and then been running upstairs every five seconds because the dog won't stop barking. So if I said this a bunch of times already, I apologize. But the stats folks will also tell you it's not about yards or yards per attempt, it's about attempts. That's fair enough. In fact, data will seemingly support that, at least as far as the Packers here, because if you look at attempts, the Packers are 21-0 and in their top 21 and well actually they're they're 21 and 1 because both of the last two were 28 attempts 21 and 1 when they run the ball 28 or more times so the equation seems to be very simple run the ball a bunch but again it just brings you back to the original equation of running the ball well why because if we're not running the ball well we're not going to run the ball 30 times this has been the exact issue that I've talked about when you get into the playoffs why do we keep losing these games the offensive line implodes. We try to run the ball. We can't. So Aaron Rodgers has to throw the ball. And so we get away from the run, which, pause, we already lost at that point. We abandon the run. We say, Aaron, you got to take this because we can't run the ball. The defense pins their ears back, pressures Rodgers every single down. He's under pressure. He's under constant duress. We lose the game. So yes, the statistics will tell you that attempts matter the most. But do the statistics tell you why a team does or doesn't attempt to run the ball? Again, this is the whole salt thing. It doesn't matter if you run, the well, run well, just run a lot. No. You have to at least run, and, and maybe, maybe that's the point where, where what I'm saying in the analytics people can reach across and shake hands. You don't have to run 7.4 yards per attempt like we did against Detroit, but there is a bottom threshold that you have to be able to do so that you can justify running 30 times. Because I, I hate to tell you, if you run the ball for two yards per attempt, I don't care if you run the ball 40 times, you lose that game. So there needs to be a bottom level of aptitude on a consistent basis, on a game-to-game -game basis, so that you can commit to the run, which the Packers do need to do. And I'm not talking about more than 50% of the time. I'm not saying running the ball is more important than passing the ball. I am saying that running the ball a lot and successfully has a very high correlation to winning football games. Yeah, well, it's not as important as, as passing. Go look at passing yards and passing attempts, okay? Passing yards from the top, win, loss, loss. <laughs> so we, we only have to get to the second highest before we already get to losses. Look at the lowest, loss, win. Oh, we only got to get to the second one before we have a win. 96 passing yards against the Carolina Panthers, and we won. Okay, what about attempts, though? Win, loss, loss. Oops, see, we did it again. All right, but check the least amount of attempts. All right, let's see. Least amount of passing attempts. Win, 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 loss. Win, 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 win. Wow. 16 and 1 when we've passed the least amount of times. That's weird. Well, you're looking at attempts. You're not looking at completions. Look at completions. All right. Most completions. Loss, loss, win, win, loss. What? 
yeah, most completions over the last three years, 34 completions against the Philadelphia Eagles. We lost 27-34. How about against uh, Tampa Bay? We lost 26-31. Well, again, it's the whole thing about, you know, if you're, you got to throw the ball because you're losing and you got to run the ball because you're winning. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Again, it comes down to doing things successfully. And all I'm saying, without doing a, a forensic autopsy on every single one of these games, because don't tempt me, I freaking will. You have to run the ball successfully, period. I don't care if it's you have to run the ball successfully so that you can run more attempts, so that you can set up the pass, so that you can win the football game. Fine. But I don't want to hear any garbage about running the ball is useless because it's stupid. You have to be successful with running the ball so that you can run the ball a lot, so that you can pass the ball more successfully, so that you can win games because you win games through the air. I'm fine with that assessment. But it all starts at the very beginning, doesn't it? It doesn't start with pass the ball well. It starts with run the ball well. That's where it starts. And so Ken Lass of Cheesehead TV, I didn't read your article. I don't intend to. But I agree. It is time for the Packers to commit to the run. And again, commit to the run, in my mind, doesn't mean that's your number one focus. It doesn't mean get away from the pass. But it does mean we have to get better at this so that we can do it more often, so that we can win more football games by being much more efficient through the air. Because if we cannot run the ball well, and I don't think we did last year, nowhere near as good as we should have. If we do not run the ball well, we struggle to throw the ball, and if we can't run and you can't pass, you can't win. And again, ultimately, this, always, this, this comes back to the offensive line. It's why I was saying that offensive line is our biggest need in the upcoming draft, and it was. Even after Devontae left, it is. You want these wide receivers to succeed? We need the offensive line to succeed. Sounds dumb, but again, so that we can run the ball successfully, so that we can commit to the run more, so that it opens up the passing game and makes things a little bit easier for the young guys to be able to contribute, and Lazard and Cobb, etc. Um, I think today is going to end up being a little bit short, so we might as well call this a halfway point, take a break right here. Uh, I do have a lot of questions, but it's also Memorial Day, and we're going to a parade in like an hour, so i got to hurry up. Parade, uh, breakfast on a fireman's firehouse, something. I don't know, but I got to get rocking. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal, independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. Here's a fun one to close out Memorial Day. This is via JCN, which is uh, at JCN 686-05796, says... What about putting together an all-NFC North team and seeing how many Packers make the list? I love that. I love that. I'm going to be honest. I'll be objective. All-NFC North team. Let's do this. I think the hard part 
honestly is going to be looking at younger players and saying, you know, I mean, for example, Bears fans would probably make the case that Justin Fields would make the most sense because Aaron Rodgers only has a couple of years left. I think if there was a different young quarterback, you know, I mean, for example, if it was Joe Burrow, and I know I keep talking about the guy, but that's, there's no question. E- even if you say Aaron Rodgers is better, fine. Joe Burrow is like 15 years old, so he's going to be playing for forever. And uh, for that reason, quarterback, very obviously, is going to be Aaron Rodgers. Now, let me look at the question real quick. I think the way I'm going to answer this question with an all-NFC North team is building a team for 2022. So I'm not going to worry about youth, aside from maybe young guys that might take a leap. But I'm not going to worry about 2025 or whatever. It's, it's simply, we're building a team to crush 2022. So Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Um, let's do running back next. Here's the thing. Are we just saying Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon? Because I think they're both better than David Montgomery. I mean, if you want to look at PFF, you can. Aaron Jones was the sixth. He's the second best running back on this team, according to PFF. He ranked sixth. Montgomery ranked 28th. Dalvin Cook ranked 42nd. And uh, DeAndre Swift ranked 40, uh, 59th. So you tell me what to do. What are we doing here? I mean, if you're, if you're looking for, you know, maybe you need like a better receiver. Or whatever, well, it's AJ. It's, it's Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is that receiver. So I don't exactly know what you're talking about. Dalvin Cook had a 51.6 receiving grade, which is hilarious. They're lining him up more in, in the receiver spot. Um, David Montgomery had a 69 overall grade. Swift had a 58 overall grade. Sounds like the only competent receiving back in the entire group is uh, Aaron Jones with like a 71 overall receiving grade. And A.J. Dillon's the best pure running back. So uh, yeah, the quarterback will be Aaron Rodgers and both running backs will be the Packers running backs. Left tackle. David Bakhtiari, right tackle. See, I I really want to say Elton, and I probably should, but it's worth pausing a little bit at least. You've got Brian O'Neill for the Minnesota Vikings, who's pretty solid. He's he's 26, which again doesn't matter so much, but um, he's young enough that you don't really expect any kind of a fall off or anything like that. He's been very consistent over three years in the 70s, and then you've got Penny Sewell who started off kind of slow, ended with a 77 overall grade. Um, If he takes even a half a step forward, this dude's going to be a freak. And then for the Bears, I don't even know how they're going to set this up. I'm thinking um, Jenkins is going to be the left tackle, not the right tackle, like PFF says, but 47 overall. The the bottom line is the Bears' offensive line is trash. I'm not picking any of these complete garbage players. But Elton Jenkins did have the highest grade of anybody with an 82.1 overall grade. He's still young enough that you could see him taking another step, although the injury, and I'm not looking at, you know, well, they're not coming back until we whatever, because I don't know what's going on with every other team. I'm just picking best players. I think I am sticking with Elton Jenkins. Interior, I don't know. Um, John Runyon is in contention. His grade wasn't super fantastic, but he's right in line. I mean, it's all mid to high 60s for the three teams with um, Jonah Jackson, Ezra Cleveland, and John Runyon. All of them also have played two years. If you're going just purely on um, grades, Jonah Jackson makes the most sense. He made a huge jump from a 57 overall grade to a 69 overall grade. He was a third-round pick. Ezra Cleveland made a jump from 66 to 68. He was a second-round pick. Here's my biggest issue, though, and it's going to sound like I'm being biased because I'm picking all Packers. Jonah Jackson had the highest grade, but it was all run blocking, 76 overall. He had a 56 pass blocking grade. Ezra Cleveland had a 71 run blocking grade, a 55 pass blocking grade. Our guy had a 57 run blocking grade, 72 pass blocking grade. What are you going to pick? I'm going to pick the pass blocker. (laughs) It's also a big reason why I don't think he's going to end up losing this job as much as it would be cool to see the rookies take over for a six-round guy. John running with a 72 pass blocking grade is going to be hard to replace. Now, at center, it's not even close. Frank Ragnow, the De- Detroit Lions, wins that job walking away. He's one of the best centers in all of football. Um, no real disrespect to Josh Myers, but at the end of the day, he was he he did grade out as one of the worst centers in football. So hopefully he figures it out, but it's there's no it's not even close. Not even close to being close. Um, right guard, it's going to either come down to uh, Vitae for the Detroit Lions or... Um, Chris Reed. I don't really care. Um, Vitae's got a cool name, so there's that. He's also a little younger, so I'll go with that. He does have some real 
bad down stuff. But, you know, we could turn to the rookies. I just don't know if I want to do that. So let's just call it Vitae and call it a day. The NFC North does not have, um, in general, they really don't have very good interior offensive lines aside from Ragnow, to be completely honest. Um, tight end, I think I'm just going to go with one. I'm guessing it's got to be Hawkinson. Um, I know a lot of Packer fans are going to want some of our guys to make it, but I think TJ's probably just the guy, so I'm going to go with that. Wide receivers, um, Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Probably just taking both of those guys, and then a slot receiver. I'm taking uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. So no Packers at wide receiver. Probably not a big surprise. No Packers or um, Bears, which isn't entirely just because our guys aren't very good. It's also because you're talking about some of the better receivers that are out there. So I think that's it for the offensive line or the offense in general. I'm not going to do a uh, fullback or anything. So defensively. Looking at defensive tackles, we're not going to go anywhere near the Detroit Lions because that's a complete joke. The Vikings have Tomlinson and Phillips. The Bears have nothing. The Packers have Clark. They have Lowry. They've also got the young gun in Wyatt. So if I'm picking three guys, I think what I want to do, um, I'm, tr- I'm kind of torn between the Vikings guys here. I think I'm going to take Dalvin Tomlinson because he's been very, very consistent um he's also pretty solid against the run and the pass he has been declining every single year but he's only 28 and then I'm going to take Clark and um I think I'm going to take Devontae Wyatt just for the upside I know you can add more you need more than three but I'm just going to go with three if I had only three I think I'd go with those because you got two established guys that you know you can trust and then you've just got sort of this wild card so that is the first rookie I think I'm going to take is Devontae Wyatt um again one of the more athletically freaky people just in football. Um, Off the edge, Rashawn Gary is automatic. The Bears don't really have anybody I want. Maybe Quinn, but you know, again, he ranked 34th. Daniil is obviously a uh, in consideration. It's kind of hard because, you know, you talk in scheme, but if we just remove the scheme element, Zadarius is in the mix, and then you've got Aiden Hutchinson of the Detroit Lions. (sighs) If I had to pick two, it's probably just going to be Daniil Hunter and Rashawn Gary. Um, I just, I don't think it's, it, it's kind of a can't miss. These guys are just solid. You know what I mean? Um, I think Denis, I, I think Rashawn has the potential to be the top pass rusher in football. I don't necessarily think he's going to be, but I think he has that upside. And if he can take another step, I mean, he ranked fifth. So he's got four spots to go, right? It's not that crazy. Um, and Daniil, again, is just very consistent. I think if I had to kind of rank where I would go after that, probably Aiden Hutchinson, then maybe Zadarius, then Preston. Might even throw in Robert Quinn ahead of some of these guys, um, just because although he hasn't really been that good of a football player for a long time, he did have a lot of stats. But either way, if we're just doing two, it's uh, Hunter and Rashawn. Cornerbacks, I'm starting with Jair for sure. Um, Detroit, I'm trying to look at who else here. Detroit does have Jeff Okuda, but he's been in the league for two years, hasn't done anything, although last year he only played one game, but still 42 and 53 overall grades. Amani Aruarie has been bad the last two years. Parker hasn't done anything. A um, lot of rookies in this group. Chicago did take Kyler Gordon, and they have Jalen Johnson. Minnesota took Andrew Booth. Uh, they've also got Cam Dantzler, who's been pretty solid for two years now. I know for a fact every Packer fan is like, dude, just take all the Packers. It's obvious, but I don't know that it is super obvious. Um, Stokes, I'd be taking more on upside than anything else. He had a 65 overall grade. He ranked 45th compared to Cam Dantzler ranking 17th, um, although their coverage grades were pretty similar. Cam just had a really good run defense grade, which I honestly don't care. He was number one, which is great, but uh, <sighs> It's so tough. I'm not going to take any of the rookies because it's such a crapshoot. And I've got plenty of guys that I I, I know at, the, at my floor is the Packers DB group. Really, the only question is, do I want Cam Dantzler? Um, and I kind of think I do. Although, again, I just I don't know that he has the ceiling. He's a third round pick. So I, I'm not taking him over Stokes. I, I like Stokes' upside. And again, their coverage grades were about the same. So I'm taking Stokes. Um, so really, it's Razul Douglas or Cam Dantzler. Cam has been consistent over two years. Razul, again, my biggest issue with him is that he's so up and down. And there's a big question about him, for me anyways, having a big drop off. <sighs> but again, I'm, I'm, am I going to replace the guy that just completely 
tore it up for us for a guy that is a really good run defender? I don't know. I'll just take Razul. Who cares? It's a Packers podcast. Nobody's going to be that mad at me. Um, linebacker Devondre Campbell is going to be the top guy. There is also concern about regression, but until I see it, Cam or Campbell is the top guy. Um, Walker is a consideration. Roquan is, you know, a coverage guy if you wanted to do that. I mean, as far as athletic freakiness or whatever. 6'1, 225, 4'5 five speed, got 68 coverage grade. It's an option. Massively overrated, but I'm sure the Packers would would appreciate it if they had him at their disposal. Um, Kendricks is an option, but at 30 years old, he had a uh, really bad year last year. So he had really t- just out of nowhere. It's, it's such a weird thing. I know I've said this a thousand times, but four years in a row, he wasn't very good. He got Everybody thought he was so great, and it's like he's not that good. All of a sudden, 2019, 90 overall grade. And I'm like, well, that was an outlier. It won't happen again. Then he has an 82 overall grade, which is a regression, but not as much as I expected. I expected him to get back to his 60s like he has been his whole career. But then 2021, 59 overall grade. It was his worst year since being a rookie. Um, So kind of weird, but I'm just not touching Kendricks. I just don't buy it. And the Detroit Lions guys are a joke. So um, the really, the only question here is, do we go with Roquan or do we go with Walker? I know Bears fans listening are going to throw an absolute fit because they think Roquan's a freak and I'm being a homer if I take Walker. But Again, Roquan has a 47 overall grade. Basically, every single Lion or Vi- Vikings linebacker is better than Roquan, just based on the grades. Um, he's just such a liability against the run. It's it's ter- and he's not that good in coverage. He's an absolute liability. And yes, I know he can go sideline to sideline. So I'm sure there's tons of great highlights of him beating uh, offensive linemen as they're trying to reach him and they can't reach him because he's too fast. I get that. But if anybody gets their hands on him, they're going to launch him 10 yards. He's a he's a complete and utter liability. I'm going with Walker. Um, and then Adrian Amos will be uh, a safety for us. I think maybe um, Harrison Smith will be my next pick. There are, again, some uh, rookies to consider. I'm not going Savage because, you know, he just didn't prove anything. There's Lewis Seen also, and then there's Brisker. But, I, again, I don't think I need to. If I got Adrian Amos and Harrison Smith, I think I'm set. So um, looking at it, we've got Packers quarterback, two Packers running backs, uh, no wide receivers or tight ends. We've got uh, offensive line is all Packers except for center. Two of our three defensive tackles are Packers. One of our two pass rushers is Packers. All three corners are Packers, both linebackers are Packers, and um, one of two safeties is Packers. You can nitpick a little bit if you want, and granted, I'm mostly just going down the line with PFF. If you wanted to use other metrics or whatever, that's fine, but it's not that far off. Um, Again, a lot of people would replace Roquan with Walker, fine. I'm sure the corners would vary depending on who you ask. Probably the defensive tackles might vary a little bit, especially with Wyatt would probably pick somebody else over the rookie. Offensive line, there'd be some contention there, and I'm sure running back people would throw a fit, although they'd be wrong. Um, but the point is, it's it's not that far off. I think anybody that does this and doesn't make the Packers 50% of this offensive and defensive roster is out of their mind. But anyways, I got to get going. Uh, you folks have yourselves a fantastic Memorial Day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.